everyone, welcome back. It's Christine again with The Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a Bernese mountain dog. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intros Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. Before we get started, though, I just want to let you all know I'll be dropping down the videos to once a week on Thursdays um, just to get through Q4. After Q4, I'll be bumping it back up to Tuesdays and Thursdays again. So let's get arting. All right, here's the Bernese mountain dog. Um, it's got a couple different colors. It's It's got a lot of black. Um, with some of the some tan mixed in, some white, and then the tongue is pink. So, um, not big fan of drawing um, black. It can be trickier because of the nature of working on black. But um, we're gonna get started with that because it it is my least favorite to draw. So um, we're just gonna start, you know, by putting one stroke in front of the others. As always, for black, I'm using gray because I can't use black for black when I'm drawing on it. Um, as you're angling the strokes through here, right, we're going to start twisting this off, come straight to the edge of the eye, and then loop it up and over. But be careful by the eye. Oh, that was, neither of those are good. Because uh, we're drawn to eye, so it's one of the first things we look at. So if something's wrong with the eye and how we've drawn it, um, people are going to notice that. And then underneath, angling this down. And over here, angling it out. Put one stroke in front of the other. They have um, somewhat long hair. Animals, uh, even long-haired animals, typically the fur by their noses are the shortest. And so their faces tend to still be a bit short. And then as you come out to the edge, it'll get longer. So they have some long hair, but by their eyes, nose, and just sort of in general, this section of their face, um, it's not going to be quite as long as once we come to the edges here. You can see I'm lengthening out my strokes. So you want your, your strokes to be the length of um, the hair in relative, you know, to how you've drawn it. So making sure, you know, that now comes over can be a little longer, which makes it a little easier to draw. Angle that up. And then as you come up the forehead, right, it's it's angling up as it comes to the ear. And kind of in the middle, you're going straight up. So it's straight up, and then we'll, we'll be angling it off as we come to an edge. Or, I'm sorry, as we work our way over. We'll do the same thing on the other side, but they have a white stripe going down the middle of their face. So. We'll be doing it there. So just bringing this straight up. They have fur, and as I mentioned, long fur, so it doesn't really matter that we come off the edge of what we've drawn. Just as long as we're making sure we're following contour. Now ears can be a little shorter, although the hair on their ears I think is still a bit long. But um, on some animals, the hair by the ears shortens back out, even if they're long-haired. Not so much with these guys, but with others. All right, so just bringing this hair down nice and long so we don't have to worry about keeping it short. And then, you know, same thing on this side, right? We have the hair coming straight to the eye. Oh, again, overzealous. <laughs> you can come to the edge and go out off except with the eye. The eye is the one space I'm going to say be super careful. Even over here, you want to make sure there's enough information when we get to that. And then underneath, rotating it down. Before angling it back off. Right, but here, up, up and over. There's a little bit of a, a bulge in our faces where our eyes are because our eyes are, you know, literally a, um, a ball in a circular recess in our heads. So inevitably there's a bulge right where that eye socket is on a lot of animals, including humans, but animals as well. 
Depends on the animal. All right, just bringing this over. Likewise, on the back side of the bulge, it comes back down, right? So we want to make sure that shows up before it kind of straightens back out. And then again, that hair gets long as it comes down. I'm gonna readjust a little bit over here. So this is up, but this should be already rotating over. Off the edge of the nose. Okay, and then just like on the other side, right? Bringing that down the ear. And their hair's long, so we can extend this out. Now the nose is also black, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in as well. Middle comes straight down. Side I'm looping over. There's no fur here, so no need to worry about stroke length. Um, making sure though I'm following the contour of the nose, right? You can see I'm looping that down. And then as it comes down, having this loop back where it's now coming off in a different angle. Highlights and shadows will give us the dip in his nose he has. And then on the other side, we angle it the other way. So just bringing that down. Looping that in. And then down here, likewise. Changing that angle. Let me pop that off. We have a nose. He's a good boy. A good pupper. Alright, and then we have, you know, they have the little black section um, in their mouths. So that's what this is creating a little bit of texture here because they have, you know, they, it's often bumpy. So I'm doing that just by going up and down with my strokes. I do the same thing on this side. It'll make it look like it's bumpy. Looks a little weird right now. <laughs> without any other context. So now we're going to change this tan color. So the tan is up in here. And then down into the face a bit too. So following the same lines we've already done, right? We already have these strokes. so still layering them in between. It doesn't matter that they come perfectly to the edge. It's actually probably better if they overlap a bit. And then down in here, same thing. We're gonna follow that down. Pulling the lines straight out instead of curving them, especially on the mouth. And then to help create a sense of changing direction changing the direction that the lines were going for this loop here. Give him that smile. And it comes down. There we have that little bit of a loop. And then as we come back off of that, changing that angle, and then bringing it down until it essentially runs into white. And then he's got a little bit, and this isn't true for all of them, so this is kind of, you know, however you want, this little bit on the sides, and then maybe a little bit in the ears. Not a lot, just enough. All right, let me pull back. We're doing so far. And then the white. Hair by the nose tends to be the shortest. 
So we'll start nice and short, coming straight up. And we need to angle it into the lines we've already drawn. Right, so as we come off to that side, we need to turn the angle. But straight up in the middle. Again, there can be some overlapping. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you can have some variation depending on how you want like fur to be messed up, which is kind of what this is up here, right? Some fur pushed over. And then come straight off the nose, run into the lines we've already done. We'll see, I constantly pull that off because I want to get a sense for how he's looking. I don't want to mess something up because I wasn't paying attention. It's easy to get like in and focused. So it's always a good idea to kind of pull out and see what you're doing, how it's looking. Same thing with this guy, pulling it straight off. And then a little bit in as we come to the middle. And then what little bit of his chin that we can see, which isn't a lot, around his tongue. <laughs> right now he's got a good smile. All right. And now the pink of his tongue. Just like the nose, there's no hair here, so it doesn't matter how long our strokes are. Yeah, that's a good start. All right, so um, get started adding the highlights and shadows. We're gonna start with the black, which is the gray. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is not put a lot of pin pressure and fill in all of the black. Uh, I've talked about this before. When you're designing on black or drawing on black like I am now, um, using gray for black can be tricky because you don't want it to look gray. Some of that will be dictated by the colors around it. When we brighten up the white and the brown, it should help darken the gray. But even still, if I put too much pin pressure or over highlight it, um, it will look gray and I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna put just light pin pressure and just follow the direction of the lines that are already here um, and fill the whole thing in. And it's also, it's not just about the pin pressure, but also about how many lines are in place that will um, sort of make it look like it is uh, black or gray. So the less lines there are, the darker it'll be, the more lines, the, the brighter it'll be. That's how we're gonna highlight it. So we're gonna add more lines to it. Um, so as I'm adding this right now, uh, holding off my pin pressure and not adding a ton of lines, just enough to sort of fill it in. And we'll add more lines in when we want to highlight it. But we're just going to follow all the lines that are already done. So for the most part at this point, I'm not really shadowing or highlighting. I'm just adding this in. And I'm going to do this real fast and we will be back to talk about more. And by we, I mean me. All right, so there you go. So now it'll just be a matter of adding um, the highlights. I'm just gonna fix around his eye, I feel like. Not quite right. Leaving too many gaps. And fix around the other eye. <laughs> and then we'll be ready to start adding the highlights and shadows for it. This will make it a lot easier to do, um, to add the highlights and shadows. And while I'm here, I can fix if I think something doesn't look like it lines up, right? If one eye, for instance, that one looks like he has like a bulge, an extra bulge over here. And he does it on the other side. Just trying to make sure they match. Now, yeah, sometimes what I'll do too is I'll take off this sketch layer, but I don't, I'm not sure that we need to just yet. Okay, so um, I'm gonna say that the light source is coming from above and to the right. I know that's a shocker. I know that's always where I do it. 
Again, as always, it's not behind or next to because of the way it be highlighted above and in front of means it'll be highlighted, you know, on uh, the best way to, to give him the most light. If it were behind, you'd have a highlight along the, the edge. And if it were next to, you'd have this like extreme highlight and then it would have extreme shadow on the opposite sides of that. So as I mentioned before, to highlight this, I'm not gonna add more pen pressure. I'm only gonna add more lines because um, I've already added lines in, so adding more lines will just brighten it up. And you can see already, just that little bit is adding some highlight to them. All edges are in shadow. So we're just going to be kind of doing this light pin pressure. It'll be just enough to give a difference from one side to the other. And then the, the colors around it, when we do those, will really help sort of pull that in. You can see even with this, whole, this pulled back pin pressure, how much just doing that is, is brightening this up. Now the ear is probably casting a little bit of shadow too. So, I mean, all edges are in shadow, but his face would probably go just a little bit further. But his ear is casting some shadow. And then you have the, the eye bulge here. It's probably casting just a little bit as well. Not much, but a little. But everything else on this side should be highlighted. In the... Uh, in the black slash gray. <laughs> we'll do the same for the nose and the mouth when we get there. But we'll do those things after we get the rest of the fur color in. Now that we've done the black, it'll be a lot quicker. Also trying not to overdo it, but making sure that all of it looks somewhat uniform. And of course you have the ear. And we'll rough up his hair too, since it's long. We'll, you know, mess it up a little later, near the end. That's nice and, and quick to do. Now the other side, some of this will still be in, in uh, <laughs> some of it will be shadow, some of it will be highlight. So highlight against the forehead. Forehead usually very little blocking on a forehead, so they it's going to hold the highlight the longest as well because it's on that top edge, right? If you have a ball, you'd have the sun that really catches across the top, kind of what the forehead's doing. So all of this would be in highlight. And then the front part of the eye, where the eye is bulging down towards the right, would be in highlight. And the back side won't be the kind of the opposite of what we did on the other one. Top will be, we have some of this probably still in highlight. If where it works, it's way over. And then at some point through here, this transitions into shadow. But under the eye on this side, we're still gonna have a little bit of highlight. The edge of the ear is gonna have some highlighting. Gonna give it a little burst over here as well, kind of in this middle part where he has his ears sort of pushed forward a bit. Catching just a smidge of light. I'm going back into shadow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now we're gonna do the brown. Now the brown. Right, we come up in here, this will be full pin pressure. And this is where you really brighten up those colors and we have the opportunity to make this gray look like it's black. It's hard to do it this way when you're doing an animal that's all black because um, it will want to look gray. <laughs> I mean, there's ways to do it, but it's, it's definitely a little trickier. Even on this side, right, his little eyebrow is still in highlight whole thing, so both sides this eyebrow will be full pin pressure. And so this isn't more lines, we're brightening it up with pin pressure alone. Although I guess, you know, we are adding more lines, but 
a good burst of, of pin pressure can really help. Typically, I only um, do the line. I'll do I'll do um, even with with other colors. I'll do that where I take more lines to highlight it, especially typically on a side that's in shadow. It's my way of making sure I have the shadows and highlights right. So right, all edges are in shadow. So these edges down here in shadow. I'm just going to do that really quickly. Again, we'll go back through and we'll flop his hair up. I'm going to add a little bit of highlight to it, but I'm going to go ahead and just do the whole thing in shadow. And again, just like with the black, when I'm doing shadow, I'm holding back my pin pressure. So this is very, very light. And that's going to shift. Once we get up his face a bit, and this is also, some of this is going to be in shadow, so I'm going to do this whole little side face, right, and then we're just going to come down. Sometimes I find it easier to get the shadows set so that I don't have to worry about figuring out where they would be um, before I just add the highlights. You know, it's not too hard to do, but sometimes I'll do it this way just so that it's a little easier. Uh, and then this is going to be in shadow, right? It's underneath his lip. So this edge. And then, of course, the edge of his face, or the edge of his, his lip, cheek, I don't know what you would call it, would also be in shadow all the way up because of... Um, it's an edge. <laughs> right. And all edges are in shadow. <laughs> so all of that still remains. And then the other side, of course, right, this back side's in shadow. Um, I was going to say some of it might be catching the light, but I, this, some of this will be catching the light. I don't know if the rest of this, the rest of this won't be. It's deep enough in shadow, it shouldn't be catching down in here. Um, it's solidly on that back side, and you have the nose at this point that's blocking. Of course, you have that little bulge down here, so we want to make sure that that's clear. Um, but otherwise, I might add a little bit of a highlight. It's not going to be a full highlight where his mouth has that little bit of a grin going on. I want to make sure that that's preserved. <laughs> He's so cute with his happy little face. But otherwise, you know, still doing that backed off pin pressure and changing the direction of the lines like I did when I sketched it, right? Always following those directions unless I decide to make a change. Sometimes I do. But otherwise I'll follow that because there's a reason I did it in the first place. Um, and we can still see that. It'll, you know, it'll show up to us. Look a certain kind of way. Alright, so all that very little pin pressure. And again, we'll mess up his hair later. So I'm leaving those in place because I'm not done with them, but we'll be really messing up his hair later. So all that backed off pin pressure. You can really see the difference, right? Backed off pin pressure versus full pin pressure, how much that can really change it. And then up here with the ear. Again, this will have some highlighting to it. As will this. Okay, now. I am putting a little bit more pin pressure, but because I already have lines in place, I'm not, I don't need to fully do it. The lines themselves will help. And then over here, this one's gonna transition part way through to some shadow. And then these guys, full pin pressure. I am changing the direction of the lines a little bit. When I sketched it, I realized I'd made a little bit of a mistake but it wasn't that big of a deal for me to go back in and necessarily fix it when I could just fix it like this. Make sure all the way under his grin is in shadow so that the grin shows up and highlight. And we want to blend this together. Right, I don't want... Um, the highlight... 
or the shadow looking like the transition is a bad transition where you can clearly see the difference and so you want them to kind of blend in that'll be important to making sure it looks a little bit more natural right so in some cases that means I'm brightening up the shadows but the idea is I want to back off my pin pressure before I get to the shadows so that it blends if not that's okay I can brighten them up I left enough room to give me that option All right but you'll see it down in here full pin pressure right here and then I want to make sure it runs nice and neat into his cheek. Right now we're backed off. Full pin pressure and then backing off. Backing off in here. Or giving myself enough runway to sort of blend it in. I'm going to give a little bit of a burst over here. I'm not putting full pin pressure, just a little bit more extra line so that catches. And it'll catch our eye like it's, you know, clearly turned up and we're noticing that. And then I'm going to give a little bit of highlight down in here. Nothing much. Again, this isn't full pin pressure. I'm just adding a few more lines to brighten up as we come down. Right. Man, he's a good pupper. Okay. Now the white, once again, full pin pressure right up in here, following the lines we've already done. And this should really help it come all the way together. Oh, not too deep though, we don't wanna block off the nose. Um, yeah. Full pin pressure. And then, um, same as before, right all edges are in shadow, so as we bring it down, there'll be a point at which it transitions over. And it's okay to push it into the brown, just like it's okay to push the brown into the black, um, and the white into the black, because that'll help um, blend the colors together. We may do a little bit of that uh, a little bit more as we... Um, get further into it and really blend the colors in. Right, so down here, along here, this is shadow. Right, you have the mouth that's sort of looping in where that spot is, so it's looping in there, therefore turning away from the light source. And you have underneath here in shadow. And then highlight. And then when we get to the other side it starts getting into trickier territory because then we'll have a blending, you know, you have a, a transition happening because some of this will be catching the light. Just like before, you know, making sure to blend this in. Don't want a jarring transition from shadow to highlight or from highlight to shadow. And then the all edges are in shadow, so up here, this would be shadow, before it kicks back into highlight. Full pin pressure. Nose, all of this obviously highlight, um, especially when you consider that we, how, what we did on the other side, right? Because that shadow kicks in right through here, so we want to mimic that against the nose. Which means all of this is safe to just put full pin pressure as we bring that stripe down. And not being shy about pushing it into the into the black slash gray. <laughs> I'm gonna get his chin real fast before I do before I do the other side of his cheek. We'll mess up the hair all down through here too. It's not as much, but there is a little bit that's a little bit more wild. That'll help given that his tongue isn't blocking the chin or that I opted not to draw his tongue blocking the chin. I can make it look out of place, so I just wanna make sure that whatever I'm doing 
Still looks like it makes sense. And he looks like such a happy puppy. Okay, so this is still highlight, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. And now I'm gonna do this whole side in shadow, but it won't stay that way, or at least not the whole thing. Some of it will. Just gives me a little bit more control. This will be highlight. This should be highlight. But this is going to start transitioning, so I'm going to put all of this in shadow. We have this transition to get. This should all be highlight here. Just adding more lines to brighten it up. And then it'll give me some control as to where I cut the shadow, and then you have some shadow kicking in on that edge. Then you're going to have this over here. Same thing, it's catching the light, you know, this cheek is forward, cheek, lip. So this would still be in highlight. Nose is probably blocking a little, but not a ton. Now that back edge will be going into shadow. Right down into here. Over here and up. Probably connecting back in, and then making sure I blend it all nicely so that the shadow is consistent. And then taking away any large gaps. Even though this is full pin pressure, sometimes it'll create large gaps because of how I'm drawing, versus the other side, and I don't want that to be like a glaring, glaring issue, right? All right. Yeah, man, look at him. Cute little guy. Okay, so now we have the uh, the nose and his uh, mouth. I might really quickly using this gray sketch in just one little spot of teeth on either side. Doesn't have to be anything big. And then we'll just fill it in with white. I might fill in the rest of this with like a this pinkish color. But okay. No, I'm just gonna do the whole thing in shadow first. Um following the lines we already did, right? So just like I did with the other black, because it's black, I often do this. It's just easier with black to do the whole thing in shadow because of how the gray is. So follow the lines and fill it in and I'll be right back. There's his nose just like we did before. Now that we've done that we're going to add more lines to create um, uh, the shadows and highlights. I'm just looking for where that no point is so I'm just going to make a line there. Right, so he has that dip in his nose, so we're going to indicate that by having a little bit of a highlight on the other side. And then, of course, adding more lines up here. Down by the nostril, this would be going into shadow. All edges are in shadow. But I will say this side is probably picking up the light because it's Light source coming from above into the right, so you're going to have that catching it. Right, so we have just that little bit. Bring it over, have it going back into shadow underneath the nose. Try not to get too overzealous <laughs> with how many lines I'm adding. Right, and see we have this sign, that this side of that little dip. And slowly inching it off to go into shadow on this side. All right, now we have, you know, 
his little jowls down here. Uh, light pen pressure though, right at this point it's kind of going into his mouth. Might be a little bit of highlighting on the edge, I'm still going to keep that up and down pattern. Light pen pressure, just movement, you know, a lot of up and down, up and down and up and down to create a sense of texture. Works really well. We don't want this to be overwhelming because his, it's being blocked right by his face. That's what we want it to look like. If I need to, I can uh, take the sketch off for this. Even if I don't for the rest of it. Which I might need to, right? If I pop down here, I remove it, it looks a lot darker. Which, yeah, I'm probably going to have to do that. For now, we're going to draw it in and then go from there. I'm going to add a little bit in a few spots on the edge, just on the one side. I'm going to see first how um, the rest of this looks before I decide whether or not I take off the sketch for that. Okay. Now for the tongue. Just like before, I'm going to do the whole tongue in shadow. The whole thing won't stay that way, though. Because it is going to be receding into his mouth, so as we pull it up and back, bearing in mind that the tongue is slowly disappearing into a recess, right? We need to indicate that with highlights and shadows. This might be another case where I take off the sketch layer, but we'll see. And then putting, you know, even with my backed off pin pressure above, but also putting significantly less lines. Make it look like it's fading up. Okay, now. So this will be highlight. So this tongue pops out. Not putting full pin pressure, right? Still just adding more lines. Not holding back my pin pressure either. So it's more pin pressure than it was, but it's not, it doesn't need to be full pin pressure to get the desired effect. Have that middle point of the tongue where there's a little bit of a dip and then on the opposite side where it picks back up. So making sure that that's indicated blending it in more than it is now. And then as we work our way over, we're we'll backing that off as the tongue flops down on the other side. Yeah, I think I am going to do that and then we'll fix what that does. So I, all I did just then was I removed the sketch layer. But um, because of the nature of it, right, it leaves some gaps. Totally fine. I knew it would. To make sure it looks like his tongue's going back in, we have it a little bit, right? Just this little bit's kind of giving that effect. Oh, not what I just did. But we're going to fill that in a bit more, being careful with how many lines we add, more on this side than on the other. Just pulling that up very gently, very little pin pressure, and allowing that to sort of fade into the mouth. Now I'm going to take just very light pin pressure and fill in the rest of this. And then back to white, very light pin pressure to give the impression of some teeth here. Nothing big. Now we still have his eyes to do, but first um, I'm going to mess up his hair. Got nice long hair, so. Right, so to do that, I'm going to take light pin pressure and just 
have some strands coming off. And it's nothing big. I really want that to look <laughs> natural. We can build it up however much we want. The same happening down in here. I'm going to do a little bit to the rest of it. Not much. I can keep this shorter. Creates the same effect though. We'll do the same to the white and the brown. Alright, so first the brown. We'll bring this down a bit. Not as much as we do up there, but just a little bit will indicate he's a little scragglier. Same over here. And then a little shorter. And then the white can add a lot when you can do this. Really. I do honestly like doing this, this little bit of scraggling it up. And see, just that little bit can add a lot of scraggle, make it look a, like he's a long haired dog. And all the only difference is, is we've added some very light pin pressure of hair coming off. Now, the last thing to work on are the eyes. All right, so. Now for his eyes, make this a little bit more brown. Okay. So, I'm going to draw in the pupils, both sides. And then, we're going to start filling in the edges in a semicircle. We're going to leave the top black. And as we bring this edge down, we're going to follow this edge. And hope that I didn't just. No, I didn't. Same thing on the other side, right? We're going to follow the edge of the eye and then circle it in. Same thing over here. Bring that down and then bring this down. And then just connect it in. Pull back, make sure it looks like he's looking at us. And then we're going to take the elliptical marquee tool. Come down here. Well, that looks a little bit too ovular. Make a circle, preferably. <laughs> down here and then um, erase it out to make the line nice and neat. And I'm going to select and inverse it to fill back in any weird edges. Often when you do this there'll be odd gaps so it's just a way of making sure that there's no odd gaps. Select and inverse back. Now we're going to drag it to the other one. Thing. Erase that out. Select inverse. Take the brush tool. Make sure there's no weird gaps. There we go. I'm just, it looks like it's um, pretty dead on. For some reason, it looks to me like one is significantly higher than the other. I am going to take this though, this is a little bright on this edge, I'm going to redo that. With the light source coming from above and to the right, first thing we're going to do is add a burst of light to the pupil against this edge on the opposite side of the light source, going all the way underneath, but you know, preferably 
nice clean line. That's full pin pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and do it to the other one as well. We start part way up, and then we bring this down. So that's how you make something look like it's catching the light as it comes out of a recess, and that's basically what our pupils are. And then we're going to put full pin pressure on the side of the light source. Right against the pupil over here is going to be in shadow, but not too deep before it's back in the highlight. And it's going to connect into this, and this highlight is going to come all the way down, but the edge of the eye, right, this edge here, is in shadow. So, just lightly filling that in. And then the top edge up in here is in shadow as well, as it descends into the blackness. You can really see the difference right now between full pin pressure <laughs> and uh, not full pin pressure. I need to make sure all of that's blended in. Right, and this is solidly underneath. And then fade it out as it comes to that edge. Better than what I just did. And then right over here, also in shadow. But making sure that that burst against the pupil sort of fades into it. So that's one eye. <laughs> He's looking pretty cute. Same thing on this one, right? Burst the light on the side of the light source. That fades into shadow on the edge. And then underneath, obviously, shadow as well. And then that highlight coming all the way down and under. with a little bit of shadowing on the pupil on the side of the light source as it goes into um, shadow, or as it goes into the recess in our heads. And then shadow on the back side. Sometimes with birds and other animals, I go all the way around the eye. Depends on how much space, because I don't want it to look shocked. Um, so I usually do half, so that the black fills in the uh, rest of that. Creates a nice dramatic shadow there. His eyes are small enough, we won't have to fill in all the way around. All right, so just blending this in. Okay. Now, the last thing to do, and one of the most important things to do, um, just looking at his pupils one last time. With the, there's some variation here. And I'm gonna have it encircling a little bit more. All right. One of the most important things to do is to add the light flare, which is in white. I'm going to take the elliptical Maquis tool. We're going to make a little circle. I'm going to start on the side that's a little bit more in shadow first. Make sure that it's in the highlighted section, although we'll make some modifications to this. And we're going to fill it with the foreground color, which I've already changed to white. We're going to drag it over and do the same thing on this side making sure that both light flares are in relation to each other. Foreground color. <laughs> there we go, he's a cutie. Okay, so now we're going to take the um, lasso tool. I'm going to do just a little bit of like hair pushing into his... Oh, I'm going to do that a little differently. What I'm trying to do is mimic the hair that's, that's over here. All right, so we have some hair coming up. Some hair pushing in, and then nothing big. Won't need it on this one, just enough to indicate there's some stuff in the way. It's pretty subtle, 
but it shears up that size just a little bit. And there we go. But before we finish that, I'm actually going to fix one last thing right down here to bother me just a little. So we're going to bring this down just a little bit. This would be in shadow, so not a whole lot of pin pressure. It looks a little out of place. Pull back one more time. Yeah, there we go. Now he's looking like a cute pupper. All right, so that is how you draw a Bernese Mountain Dog. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all next Thursday. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay.